Dr. Blue, you said yesterday that the cause of death was manual strangulation, throttling. Can you explain what that means, uh, especially the throttling part? Uh, throttling generally means that it was done with human hands uh, as opposed to an instrument. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but it, uh, manual strangulation basically means that it was not done with uh, equipment. How do you determine that? Well, it's determined by the, the nature of the injuries around the, around the neck. Dr. Blue says he's not allowed to get into Gabby's specific injuries because of the ongoing FBI investigation. He says her body was discovered nearly a month after she was killed. What sort of challenges are involved in an autopsy when a body, as you described yesterday, has been been, been out in the wild for three to four weeks? And the situation where any body is out in the uh, uh, outside, whether it's exposed to the elements and and uh, insects and animals, uh, there is various forms of decomposition. At yesterday's news conference, the coroner brought up domestic violence and today clarified his comments this way. Uh, there were indications that Gabby was in a, uh, a, a relationship, a domestic relationship, uh, which uh, could play a part in this case, but I don't have any direct evidence of that. So a lot of things that the coroner said he just cannot talk about at this stage of the investigation. He did, though, confirm that both DNA and toxicology tests were done. He would not elaborate, though. Marnie? Brian, one question I had. Did Dr. Blue say whether or not the FBI knew and was supportive of him releasing the information on the autopsy when he did? Well, that's a good question because you'll remember in that actually actual signed autopsy report, it was dated October 5th, which means all of this was sorted out uh, more than a week ago. I asked him about that. He said he was holding off on going public because the U.S. attorney asked that he please not release it publicly until yesterday. What that means about what was going on behind the scenes, we're not exactly sure. Also, Brian, we have learned Gabby's family. They're headed to Wyoming right now. Yes, Gabby's family uh, on the way to Wyoming right now to pick up her remains. Obviously, hard to imagine what they're going through with the release uh, of the cause of death, uh, but we know that Gabby will be cremated. And the laundry's in the home behind you. We just saw that light on the garage just flip on. Brian Enton, thank you. A lot of questions tonight about if this is turning a turning point in the case, and is this manhunt going to continue on for weeks or months for Brian Laundrie, former FBI agent Jennifer Koffendoffer, and Florida State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg joining us once again live tonight. Thank you to you both. Dave, I want to start with you after that press conference from the coroner. You tweeted that you believe that murder charges are imminent. Why? Yeah, good evening, Marnie and Jennifer. I, I think they're most likely imminent because we originally know, knew the manner of death, homicide, but we didn't know the cause of death. And that's something prosecutors are waiting to find out. Now we know it's manual strangulation, which makes it more likely that I think that Brian Laundrie will be charged with Gabby's death because Manual strangulation is a crime that is very personal, very intense, and it's something that often happens in domestic cases. And look, the coroner seems to indicate that he thought this was a domestic case, unless that was a, a mistake that he said that this is one of many domestic incidents. And so why would he say that if he had evidence that someone else was involved, that there was DNA of someone else on Gabby's body? Would the coroner have said that this looks like a domestic incident like all the others, unless he misspoke. So mm -hmm. I think what you saw yesterday really moves the ball forward to charging Brian Laundry. not to mention the timeline. I mean, when they said that the death occurred three to four weeks ago, that matches the timeline of the last time Gabby was talked to, was known to be alive. Yep. Uh, the coroner did clarify that he wasn't speaking directly about Gabby's case with the domestic violence, but it did catch a lot of people's attention yesterday, Dave, as you said. Jennifer, do you agree that charges are coming based on the autopsy? I think charges are coming. I'm not sure how imminent they are, but I would expect them sooner rather than later, definitely. This autopsy is crucial for making that type of a charge. One other thing, Jennifer, you have told me as recently as last night, you believe Brian Laundrie does have allies, that he's getting help. What leads you to believe that? I believe that because of the amount of time that he's gone on and passed and he has still remained undetected. And the attorney has repeatedly said he is representing the family and he's representing Brian Laundrie. 
you would not represent somebody who wasn't alive. Dave, so let's talk about the legalities of that. If somebody is, in fact, helping Brian Laundrie to hide, they've been helping him along the way, what are the possible legal ramifications that they or that person could face? They could be charged with accessory after the fact, which is a serious felony, especially in a murder case. Uh, that would mean that someone would have to know that Brian committed a crime and they would have to do something to prevent his arrest or punishment. So, for example, if someone destroyed evidence, if someone knew Brian had committed a crime and helped him leave and get out of town, that person could be arrested for being an accessory after the fact. But it is not a crime to remain silent or to lawyer up. For you both, do you think that Brian Laundrie's attorney knows where he is tonight? Jennifer, let's start with you. I think Brian Laundrie's attorney does generally speaking know where he is at, and I think he's in communication with him. Dave? I defer to Jennifer. She has the experience as an investigator, so she would know. But I have to say this, there is no affirmative obligation for Brian's lawyer to come forward and tell investigators where he is if he knew where he is, because he has the same right to remain silent against self-incrimination as everyone else. There's no affirmative obligation on anyone to have to say what they know. And But if they lie to investigators, that would be a crime.